our second speaker is a uh, is a Peter Peter Creswell, senior sec security architect from China Micro. Um, Peter has over twenty five years of IT security experience, from a diverse background as a security architect, analyst, manager, instructor, and auditor. With Trend Micro, uh, Peter has focused on the transformation journey of a business from on premises to cloud and the architectures, processes, and the technologies that get them there safely. Peter will talk about the lessons learned supporting cloud migration. Uh, thank you, Brian. As, uh, as mentioned, my name is Peter Cresswell, and I work, as mentioned, for Trend Micro Canada with some of our biggest customers. I have been, as Brian said, doing IT forever and uh, IT security, and I've been with Trend for the last dozen years or so. And for much of the last decade, my uh, work with uh, Trend's Canadian customers has mirrored their experiences in uh, moving uh, to the cloud. So, what was my motivation? What do I want to share with you in the next 20 minutes? Uh, I'm kind of glad that um, Nick did all the work uh, laying out the structure of uh, what's going to be involved because I was going to stay away from that uh, anticipating that would be what he would do. I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, the experiences, uh, good and bad, working with our customers and supporting directly or indirectly their migration to the cloud. Uh, that's Obviously, given who I work for and things like that starts often with security as being the reason that we get invited to the table. But uh, the big issues I've seen customers struggle with uh, and succeed with as they uh, push to adopt uh, cloud technologies and solutions uh, are, you know, the, the, the things I'd like to share with you this evening. Um, and, you know, cloud can mean many things as, as, as was mentioned, and I'm just dealing with it expansively from uh, your building an on-prem cloud, uh, or uh, you know the uh, the infrastructure as a service, or platform as a service, or software or application as a service, they're all in play here. When I when I say cloud, of the last of the last little while, you know Canada uh, traditionally has been very conservative when it comes to adopting things like cloud. Uh, uh, when I was looking at my material for this talk. Uh, I was looking at something from 2011 where a Canadian IT leader said, cloud, that's not going to happen in Canada. Certainly not uh, while we don't have uh, the services available here. You know, there's a great Canadian reluctance to embrace uh, uh, these services from afar. But that has changed, you know, and, and today we look at an environment where these uh, the, the service providers uh, the, the, the people who provide services like uh, security services, we're all provisioning these things in Canada and making it possible. Uh, so last month I had a conversation with somebody who said exactly the same thing still, but uh, the fact of the matter is uh, Canada is migrating and Canada is using it, uh, especially pandemic driven, especially in the last couple of years. In fact, Gartner noted uh, that uh, for 2020, noted in 2021, that uh, the, the uh, arrival of this pandemic uh, pushed a 40% increase in uh, spending on cloud and infrastructure as a service. So uh, we are uh, there. So, you know, what's what's it looking like? And as, as Nick said, there's a, a lot of reasons why people are moving. Um, uh, and, you know, uh, th there were lots of... Uh, pilots and test projects and toes in water uh, that, uh, that that were out there and uh, it, that were really trying to, uh, as organizations tried to feel their way around and through this notion of how can they best use cloud. Um, the pandemic certainly uh, made all of those things real all of a sudden and, you know, plans to adopt hosted solutions, plans to adopt uh, shared work solutions uh, became in the last year's uh, immediate migration. So cloud for us has become a, a reality in the last, uh, the last two years. But that said, I don't think Canadian business managers were stampeded to the cloud. Uh, they uh, they had started these investigations, you know, understanding the benefits that they anticipated they were going to get uh, flexible and scalable architectures, uh, uh, enabling business agility and collaborative teams. Uh, this was all what they were building towards. And, 
when we look at it really and you know despite all this conservative uh, idea Deloitte just did a study uh, in 2021 and said, you know, it's the majority, 76% uh, of the organizations surveyed have had cloud investment for the last three to 10 years. So what are they up to? Um, Nick uh, painted a picture of uh, a structured approach, but, you know, I've seen it happen uh, on the ground in, a, in, you know, a little more uh, uh, ad hoc <laughs> method. Uh, you know, I saw first uh, the, the, the the organizations that saw the cloud, uh, saw it as an opportunity to perhaps do some data center consolidation or data center exits, as was mentioned. And, you know, they would proudly proclaim themselves cloud first, but that really meant uh, for them uh, a kind of lift and shift approach. Let's just take what we were doing and move it over. And by and large, that worked because it didn't entail changes to the uh, processes and the technologies and the security technologies that were being used. I can take something and, and it's a virtual machine, move it to the cloud and use all of the same controls, all of the same governance and see effectively all of the same things that I was doing. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't get the same benefits you know and, and and it was it was an interesting uh, approach that kind of stalled out and it gave way to kind of a second wave uh which is when uh it, uh, it was mentioned the 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 refactoring of the applications the pieces that were deployed in the first phase they began to take advantage of uh this containerization thing this cloud within the cloud almost uh, that uh, began to rethink applications and they were you know rebasing them on a containerized process and the microservices process you hear all these buzzwords and it began to open the door for these uh, loosely coupled dynamic environments operating at uh, velocity and that i think was what began to tip the uh the 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 the, the cup of IT and IT security, because velocity meant that the processes that we used before and the people's comfort level and their understanding of that went away. And Nick touched on that, the fact that, you know, I can deploy things at scale faster than like we can spin up the agents. And indeed they can appear and disappear before I get a chance to put my old traditional control in place. We also began to see uh, an adoption, especially with the pandemic, uh, of SaaS solutions. Uh, you know, now we're beginning to use uh, solutions in the cloud, and that means necessarily that data is moving off there as well. And when you look at organizations' traditional ways of, of controlling that and, and monitoring that and providing governance over that, now I'm, I've got you know, my, my traditional business, maybe I've replatformed it to the cloud, but I've got this other chunk on a, on a hosted solution, uh, something that's happening out there. And now I've got a challenge because uh, how do I see that? How do I bring that into my overall uh, governance uh, uh, process? And so I think we saw a variety of uh, issues begin to arise. And these were the kinds of questions we began to get. And, you know, it's like, well, why isn't this working as, as well as it could? And if we really look at that, you know, as somebody sitting there at the table, uh, we began to really call out things like uh, legacy IT process, a uh, process that was built on uh, controls that were applied at, uh, at the network level. Or there was a device that sat somewhere, maybe we virtualized it, but that doesn't work as easily when you want to take advantage of the cloud or We've got an agent, we've got something that we deploy on the platform, but that doesn't work as well when the platform isn't there anywhere. And, you know, we just can't keep up with the level of change. Uh, there was, the next thing we saw was that just the, the challenges with seeing what was going on. And I, I, I'm happy that we touched on this before as well. Um, as you're beginning to rebase, as you're beginning to take away the agents, as you're beginning to use uh, the types of uh, flexible networking that are involved, as you're beginning to use those SaaS services, you lose the controls that you were used to using to solve these problems. And suddenly now I can't see 
what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And that was a real problem, especially when we're thinking governance and how I'm going to maintain my, my understanding of the business and my assurance in the business. The third challenge that we saw was uh, uh, skills. Um, we have a workforce that has been used for years to how things were done. And now this cloud thing transformed what they were being, how they were being expected to apply their skills. They, uh, Velocity challenged the process. It challenged the review processes and the understanding of how I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody's going to propose a, a deployment and we're going to assess it and demand that our security suite be applied and then it's going to be deployed. Um, that's not the velocity that these cloud uh, solutions work at. And uh, whether it was the teams that were deploying the, uh, the, 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 the needed the cloud experience or the security teams that were responsible for trying to, to, uh, to, to provide the governance and controls, uh, there was a distinct lack of skills that they needed to get at this. And this was kind of the gap that we were trying to deal with. So, what works you know what did we learn from that and you know what what can we we do to uh move on um i think uh, the, there's a combination of experience and learning here and absorbing best practices and what you heard in the first presentation was a, a lovely overview of best practices and the first and best place was of course going to those uh the, those cloud service providers and when I work with organizations these days and I'm trying to help them understand what they need to do, pushing them first to the types of capabilities that uh, are provided by the cloud service provider is key. Uh, because in their well-architected frameworks, they have the blueprints, the knowledge, the expertise to help you understand what you need to build the kind of resilient uh, solutions that you're seeking to deliver, you're seeking to achieve, um, you just need to go and take advantage of it. Uh, we strongly endorse using these documents and starting with the controls uh, that are, are there. Um, and then the second thing uh, that was important, and we've been beating on about this for the last uh, decade or so, and uh, I heard Nick mention it, so. Uh, I'll throw up the picture, uh, is uh, is this notion of shared responsibility. Now, the demarcation line will change, whether it's uh, infrastructure service or platform as a service or, or uh, software applications uh, as, as a service, but the reality doesn't that, you know, there's going to be certain things that are handled for you, uh, security of the cloud and then there's going to be pieces that you need to take responsibility for your security in the cloud and that was um, a, a, a place to go but realization the cloud service providers give you many of these tools uh, many of this capability already exists it's not so much a challenge that you don't have the tool it's a challenge to make sure you use the tool and make sure you configure the tool correctly and um, getting uh, an understanding of that has been uh, probably one of the biggest challenges that that uh, that we get because you know the capability is there. Um, you just need to use it. Uh, a, um, the other challenge, though, that I draw out from this uh, is that what we oftentimes have to challenge at this point, helping people understand and helping them solve is, okay, we have these frameworks, we have these, uh, these uh, uh, service provider uh, solutions. How do I maintain consistency between service providers and consistency with what I'm doing on-prem? And you know that is uh, a real challenge. Uh, it's something that uh, there's an ESG study out there. So it's, you know, the, the top top of mind. Forty seven percent of surveyed organizations uh, identify this as being a real challenge, and it's an area you know where our expertise comes to play and can help because we can deliver that kind of uh, that uh, solution. But 
when I look at uh, trying to, you know, draw some lessons from the problems I've seen and the solutions that I've seen work, uh, I focus our thinking on uh, kind of three things here: uh, the, the 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 visibility, the the automation, and how we're going to get back to achieving and demonstrating compliance, taking advantage of all the structured work that uh, that Nick was talking about. Um, it's been noted uh, that one of the chief challenges uh, for business leaders as this cloud migration starts is uh, visibility into what's going on. Uh, are things still secure? Do I know uh, that the governance guidelines I need to achieve are still there? Uh, ISC squared uh, says, you know, 94% of organizations cite this as a moderate or extreme concern. This is kind of the key thing. I need to be able to show that I have a handle on what's happening. Achieving better visibility uh, and the related uh, assurance and security and governance goals are being met is a function, uh, I think, first and foremost, of better integrating the teams that are, going, are involved in delivering the solution. Um, one indicator that I look for when I'm introduced uh, to, the, to the customer is, who's at the table? Um, you know, am I talking to the good old security team again because they've decided that there's, you know, one magic bullet that's going to solve this problem? Or am I in a multifunctional group of individuals uh, from the development side, the people who are trying to build the solution, from the operation side, the people who are trying to deploy the solution, and from the security team? I think when you see uh, all of the people together, you know, that's when you can. Uh, truly understand what is trying to be achieved and how I'm going to deliver that assurance and governance that's 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 needed. And you know, yeah, I've got tools as a from, from Trend to help with that and to and to build this in. But you know, just making sure that we bring everybody to the table helps avoid the roadblocks and deliver the goal you want to achieve. Automation was mentioned, and I second and third and fourth and eighth. Uh, the importance of automation and the <laughs> Brian's upcoming seminar, uh, so important in cloud success. Um, a phrase that I hear bandied about talking about clouds and security is, uh, you know, what we're building here now is security as code. And that comes from a realization that uh, what's being implemented here fundamentally at the end of the day is code. It's being deployed as code, as scripts, as JSON. And as uh, you know, the majority of security professionals that we hire today, and when we talk about the reskilling, uh, are uh, at Trend are coders, are people who can work with the APIs that make this environment hum, that deliver the velocity and the agility and the flexibility in the space. Um, well, deploying cloud solutions, you know, can start as a manual process. At the end of the day, it's going to take wings when it's automated. Automation is a challenge and it's an opportunity for the business. It's going to drive that agility, like I said, but it and it makes things faster and more resilient in things. But it propagates errors faster. It uh, the misconfigurations which lead to exposure happen faster when they're in code. So automation uh, can be a great thing from the security side, though, because if I begin to recognize and it helps when I'm part of that diverse team I was mentioning earlier, when I see what's going on, you know, this is the motivation, another buzzword for you, shift left, when I can get into the heart of how things are being built, and I can use security controls to help developers build better, and I can then know by design what is coming out the other end of the DevOps pipeline, of the CICD pipeline, is in fact uh, more secure, more uh, better built than it would have been if I wasn't there and I was just trying to use controls at the end of the process. Getting involved and, and automating how I fit into that process is so important with what we're trying to achieve. Last but not least, I do want to mention uh, compliance because, you know, when we talk about security, when we talk about risk and governance, uh, you know, compliance is the word that uh, the buzzword du jour. Um, and our starting point is the same things that it's always been, you know, uh, PCI, uh, maybe it's uh, GDPR, maybe it's uh, some ISO standard, whatever. 
we have a number of uh, frameworks and standards that we can follow, whether it's the Cloud Security Alliance or NIST or uh, the CIS benchmarks or even our own Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity, who publish policies and guidelines to help you understand and build a uh, secure cloud-based environment. Uh, the challenge uh, here, as we touched on, is not a lack of security controls and options. It's uh, making sure that in an environment at velocity and of continuous change, they are still implemented. They are set to the best practices that I learned from those uh, design frameworks and that they're able to uh, uh, deliver the controls that we're trying to deliver. Uh, it's another area that Trend can help with, uh, but I cited there uh, mainly because that's one of the free resources that we provide a knowledge base of over 750 cloud infrastructure uh, best practices uh, for the based on the recommended settings in those frameworks across all the major uh, cloud service providers. So, you know, it's it's an example of how we can uh, provide that information. And of course, what you what you pay for is for us to do that automated and do it for you for free. At the end of the day, and I heard Brian mention, uh, uh, Nick mentioned this, and I concur, uh, the, the secret the, 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 to, to make cloud migration successful are focusing on your people, your processes, and your technology. And it, lest I sound too, uh, too with it, I, I did pick this up from an, an ESG presentation from one of the vice presidents, a gentleman named uh, Doug Cahill. Uh, at one of our seminars last year, and he he cited people, process, and technology as being uh, the key indicators of customer success in a cloud migration. On the people note, he mentioned uh, that need to integrate developers and deployers with the security function and advocated security people to get out of your silo and go be part of the team. Um, by being part of the process, you're going to understand the cadence of development and cadence of delivery of security, and you're going to be so much more effective delivering and implementing security controls uh, that are available. Uh, the process, we talked about automation, we've talked about embedding security in the process of development and delivery. Um, uh, you know, doing automated scanning to look for those uh, misconfigurations, the embedded uh, credentials, participating in the check in of uh, stuff moving from dev to production, uh, continuously monitoring uh, for to best practice. And technology, embedding that technology in that CIDC CD pipeline uh, so that, uh, you know, differentiated uh, from past solutions so that we can take advantage of that velocity by building right the first time as, as, we, as we move on. So uh, coming up at the top of the hour, I think I'm on time. Uh, but trend marketing would be uh, uh, upset if I didn't take one slide just to say, you know, I've, I've touched on a variety of things, but I encourage you to uh, go to the uh, go to the Internet, look at our solution for delivering security controls in this space, uh, the Trend Micro Cloud One Security Platform, which is where on the left we can deliver the security controls for the IS, uh, the, the PaaS and the uh, uh, SaaS type environments embed the network security and on the right there that security control monitoring that I was talking about. With that, I would like to say thank you very much. Uh, you can come see that uh, at the link I provided there. And just like Nick, I have a list of references too. Ha ha. And uh, I, I, when this presentation gets uh, delivered to you, uh, you can uh, follow those things up and dive in detail into the pieces I was mentioning. With that, Brian, thank you very much. I am going to stop sharing and pass it back to you. Appreciate the opportunity and appreciate all your attention. Thank you.